is going on everybody welcome back to another serious angler podcast powered by our friends over at x2 power as always i'm your host bailey eichbrett and uh, this is not an ordinary show this is a bonus show uh and when i say brought to you by or powered by i should say x2 power um it is times two literally i mean we're talking x2 but it's actually times two because This is a bonus episode brought to you by X2 Power. We're doing four bonus shows from our trip down to Alabama with the X2 crew. Uh, It's actually a pretty cool deal. As you guys will see, it's not like any of our other shows, and it's not going to be, you know, intense fishing talk or education by any means. It's definitely education. Uh, You can learn a lot from these guys, but uh, it's basically going to be myself and Alex Rudd uh, that are, everybody knows Alex Rudd if you don't. Uh, you'll have to check out his show and such below. I'll link everybody's social for each show, etc. X2 social. You guys need to follow all that uh, and kind of reap the rewards of it. But um, basically, Alex and I are hosting a in-person, a four-person podcast around a campfire down in Alabama. We had uh, Sean Budiak, who's the, the VP of Category Management over at X2 Power, join us in hosting this. Sean is basically everything that makes x2 run uh you know if you can call it quote unquote our boss uh but sean is awesome he's the coolest dude to hang out with he's the guy that you want to go take fishing and go get a beer with uh he's super excited about batteries we call him the battery nerd because he's literally the expert when it comes to batteries uh and that's what's so awesome with x2 is you actually have a trusted source of people that actually know what they're talking about and aren't just slapping a label on a battery they got overseas and don't know what the heck's in it so that, that being said, this is a cool episode. It's going to be a quick intro and outro for each show because I just want to give you guys these bonus shows. Obviously, this is not your standard programming. Uh, we had Sean, Alex, and I hosting. And this episode, we have on Hunter Shyock. Uh, we had a few guys. We have a couple guys coming down the pipe, which I will introduce uh, further in the outro. But uh, we had a few guys that... Came down with us. We did some filming. You guys will see a lot of cool stuff coming on the X2 Power YouTube channel. But uh, our first guest of the four different bonus shows for you guys coming up, and they'll all be on the same day. We're going to do Tuesday mornings. Um, that way you guys can listen on P3, but also if you want to watch on YouTube, by all means. Um, Hunter is our first guest. So I guess without further ado, folks, let's get into our first bonus episode with X2 Power Pro, Hunter Shryak. What is going on, everybody? Good evening. We're coming back with a special episode tonight. A little collab here. We got uh, the Serious Angler podcast combined with our friend here, Mr. Alex Rudd, mm-hmm. the Alex Rudd Fishing Podcast. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're with a special crew. This is pretty out of the ordinary. This is usually we're behind a desk. We're at home. We're kind of using a streaming service where we got the whole crew in house tonight. We're sitting around a campfire, having a good time. We're down here at the uh, was it the River Rocks Landing down here yep. in Alabama and doing some uh, some content, some filming. But uh, we got uh, some special guests here. We got obviously Mr. Alex Rudd. How you doing, buddy? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm glad to be here. It's going to be fun. We're going to sit around. I'm going to pry a bunch of these guys for stupid questions that I'm going to come up with off the top of my head. And it's going to be a fantastic <laughs> time. I'm, I'm ready. Heck yeah. <laughs> And uh, over here we have Mr. X2 himself, Mr. X2. Sean Budiak. <laughs> How are you, sir? I'm doing great. No. Much better than the, uh, the weather in Wisconsin right now. It's much better. Chilling by a campfire in a hoodie. Probably right now in Wisconsin, it's about 30 degrees probably, so it's a lot better. <laughs> it's right, it's right. <laughs> and of course, our first victim of the night, I would say. <laughs> That's what it is. One who's not a stranger to our shows, but uh, our good pal, Mr. Hunter Shrek. Appreciate you having me on. I mean, we were at Neely Henry. We got bank grass in the water. We're going to go fishing tomorrow, so I'm excited. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be I'm interesting. I'm excited to get out and film. We haven't told the folks yet exactly what's going on. But oh, we'll shoot. I'm rock. letting the cat out of the bag. <laughs> no, not, not the not we're not we're going fishing, guys. <laughs> Newsflash. It's a fishing <laughs> show. That's all. That's all. That's a teaser. Now they're on, they're on the edge of their seat. Yes. Right? They, they don't know what's coming yet, but we have a really cool finished product that's coming that uh, you guys will see <laughs> on the X2 YouTube channel. I mean, we're going to plug it both. On all our platforms, if you I'm guys not, are not no, subscribed. I refuse to. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Alex has vetoed the X2 plug, but uh, you guys will see the finished product on there. But uh, we're going to dive into a little bit with Hunter here. Hunter's been on the Serious Angler show quite a few times. 
But we're going to on my show. He refuses to come on. I've never been. Out. I've never been asked <laughs> actually. <laughs> <laughs> That's typical Alex Rudd right there. Like, just don't even contact anybody. Yep. Make it up. Like <laughs> Friday night when it's time to go live, I'm like. I need a guest. Let me just text somebody. <laughs> like, <laughs> I got a 6 p.m. Friday text. I have yes. from Alex. Like, hey, I need a guest. Yeah. Hey, yeah, you want to come on? Let's talk. <laughs> but so every time I've had you on the show, we've been talking straight bass fishing technique, like getting real deep. But uh, I think we're going to go kind of throw it back before fishing started with you. Tonight. Okay. Yeah. Because, you know, the sport, you know, diving into it, chasing the passion is not a new thing to you from a fishing standpoint because you had a whole different career path prior to fishing yep kind of kind of unreal that unreal it for the yeah so um basically i grew up racing motocross um uh, i had always fished all my life but motocross was like my first passion you know my brother raced i raced my little brother raced got into that through my dad who drag raced and so now we're all racing dirt bikes at a young age i think my first race was 11 years old that's cool and oh, uh cool. yeah we would we would go all over the country and race all these races, try to make the amateur nationals. Eventually, I turned pro when I was 16, raced Supercross, the Outdoor Nationals, um, and basically retired at age 21 <laughs> from racing. <laughs> but uh, no, a lot of injuries and stuff like that kind of helped that decision. But the funny thing is with racing and what got me to where I'm at with fishing, there's so many similarities. Like I still feel like I'm in my racing days. Like when I was younger, traveling all over the country, like I lived on the road. Like that's how I grew up constantly, like in a van, we got a trailer and we were just, you know, I've got more stories than I could even remember, you know, stuff of us yeah. growing up, like camping and stuff like that. So to still do that to this day, like, and I feel like fishing is a lot of the same things where you just run into so many new people, you run into so many different situations and you look back like, you know, you can hang your hat on certain things. Right. Like it was such a fun, you know, experience. Like some people never get to yeah. see those things. Yeah. So yeah. that's dope. You know, what's so cool about that is like, I always can like talk, go back to like what got me into doing videos right. was like freestyle motocross. I used to watch right. those videos when I was a kid and like, that was cool to me. And so I wanted to make that in the fishing world. Yep. And it's like, I feel the similarities, you know right. what I mean? And like, that's something I always go back to is like, I feel like there's a similarities between like the YouTube dudes who are like, it's kind of counterculture. It's not traditional to what, you know, the fishing industry was, but here we are, you know, we're not out in the desert doing backflips, but right. like, <laughs> we're, we're, we're making YouTube videos. And like, you know, my first set of YouTube videos was like set to rock and roll music, like the old, yep. you know, desert videos with Travis Pastrana all that and like so that's what that's what's cool about you is like when you first kind of came around and I heard about like your motocross you know career is like oh like this dude is like relates to something that I understand you know mm -hmm. what I mean like flat bills and punk rock music and something that's not just like a fat 40 year old white guy standing on the front of a boat and I'm like I'm like this is dope you know what I mean so like no that's cool that is yeah. that is really cool but I think we all Everybody can, I mean, Sean, I'm sure you can relate to something that you were passionate about as a kid that translates mm -hmm. into what you do now. You know, same yeah, with you, absolutely. same with you, Bailey. Right. Um, and that was racing for me. Like it translated, it showed me how to be successful at a young age at certain things, um, hard work, stuff like that. My dad used to go, you know, we'd have to be racing. We didn't have all the money in the world. I would have a third gear go out of my YZ80 at, a, at 12 years old, okay? And now I knew, I finally figured out how to take the transmission, take it apart. My dad just said, figure it out. You, awesome. you know, if you wanna go race and figure it out. Yeah. So that's like how we grew up was like, just figure it out, you know? But if I hadn't learned those life lessons then, I don't think I would be where I'm at today right. yeah. with fishing. And I think, like I said, we all have those situations yeah. that, that kind of direct us in our lives, so. Yeah. Uh, without racing, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't want to be in, in fishing, I don't think, just because yeah. of competition and stuff. And that's the biggest thing for me, like with fishing, it, it fills that void from racing. Like yeah. it's, it's the same, it's like linear across yeah. the board. I, so. I, I had a cousin that grew up doing the same thing. And I, I only went to one race, but I mean, obviously you see it on social media. It's not like an uncommon, unpopular thing. Like, yeah. like you mentioned, we grew up watching these adrenaline videos, right? And you're like, dang, that's badass. Yeah. But like, 
there's a lot of correlations from the fishing side besides the you know the the injuries for the most right. part. Right. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I mean, too many. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dude, but you there's hit like the dirt going sixty, <laughs> and then you're like, oh. That could probably kill me one day. I don't want to yeah. do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, fishing is like you get a hook in your hand or you wreck your boat. So it's like, you know, tape your finger or you're dead. That's, there's right. no in between, really. <laughs> right. Hunter's going full bore. He's Actually, like, just... Most of the anglers that get hurt are hurt like like deer stands or, or yeah, something yeah, like yeah, something yeah, outside kind of, of Tweaking their back, setting the hook. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Falling like you did at Chickamauga this past year. <laughs> that actually helped my back, not going to lie. Just cracked it right back yeah. into place. <laughs> totally oh, on purpose. Oh, wow, that feels better. I had a, like a hot, flushy feeling for about 20 minutes, and then I was I was good. So. Doctor said I blew an aneurysm. I told him, yeah, kiss my ass. I'm going. <laughs> We're fishing. <laughs> well, from a business side, I feel like they're – pretty similar sports like yeah. you see the guys with jerseys you see the wrap yep. trailers and trucks right it's, yep. it's pretty similar but and it, individual sport you right. know so along those lines where it's a team effort to get everything there but still at the end of the day it's it's only you out there performing yeah. so mm -hmm. um uh you know a lot of that all translates from from motocross into fishing and just basically the ultimate puzzle you know that that was racing all the time. You're constantly looking to get better. Fishing's the same thing. Like you never conquer it. Mm -hmm. Like you're right. always on a quest to get better to, yeah. you know, what's the next best thing? How can I better myself? So, um, you know, it's, it's just never ending. Yeah. <laughs> so what was the, what was the like translation from motocross to fishing? Like when did you get into fishing or has fishing always been part of your life? So I've always like known how to fish. My brothers have known how to fish. I can cast a bait caster, those type of things. But um, like I didn't get into competitive fishing until like my brother won a bass open. Gotcha. And that was like right around the time that I like quit working or not quit. Well, I started working, quit racing and just like needed something else to do. Yeah. So like that became my thing to do after work. Just go fishing, go to the mm -hmm. Tuesday night tapping tournament, stuff like that. And the first time I fished my uh, fished a tournament, I fished with my little brother, which he doesn't know nothing about it either. <laughs> but we caught we caught two keepers, and it was a 14 inch size limit, so yeah. that's like a big deal, like, yeah, yeah. especially in Ohio. Yeah. We caught two keepers, and I was all jacked up, like you'd have thought, yeah. like it, it looked like something I just fished in the classic or something <laughs> Thank like. You, dude. That's like, awesome. and I come in, I'm like, yeah, this isn't good. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm addicted to it now. Yeah. But every uh, angler has that like oh, first yes. tournament where you're like, oh. You okay. think you humbles it, you. It's like that moment where you're like, I've woofed everybody here. <laughs> then you walk in, you're like, I just got a whooping like I ain't never done before. <laughs> but just a, just in that moment of catching those fish and like, oh, I actually did it. Like I, we actually caught some fish on our own. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like I could do this. So and cool. then, uh, yeah, ever since then, it was like I, I went from three rods to five rods to a bass boat to. Yeah. Fishing in the Bassmaster yeah. Opens the next year. <laughs> and I'm sure, I'm sure your whole motocross career, like, I think for some people, I know for me, like, when I went full-time, it's like, it's nerve-wracking. But for you, I'm sure there was almost like a sense of, like, I've done this before. Mm -hmm. I can do this again. Because it's like yep. a non-traditional, like, way to get into a career that yep. you were used to. You know right. what I mean? And I think uh, uh, a lot of that helped with when I actually became – you know, like got into the elite series or just fishing the opens against elite series guys like that's pretty intimidating but i also just came from a sport where i was racing the best guys in the world yeah. so i i kind of knew like these guys you know they wake up and put their pants on just yes, like, like we I, do yeah. where i kind of was already over that yeah. point yeah you, know, I, you still get that you know you're sitting inside a rick clun in the mornings or something but ultimately yeah, yeah, yeah ultimately yeah. you're just you know it's you i already knew that yeah. so and i know a lot of guys just knowing fletcher in general when he first got in the elites him looking up to those guys for so many years it was like it it took him a little bit to get over it yeah. where i felt like i was able to kind of yeah. get over it a little bit yeah, faster yeah. but yeah you're better than so, your brother you <laughs> <laughs> hey, at, cer at certain things i i think i am but yeah. there's a lot of things I'm not. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Talk trash about it. It's all right. It's so that, all right. that first morning, that first open morning, mm -hmm. you were over it. You were good. At the Bassmaster Opens? No, just your very, your very first open. You very, went. very first open. No. <laughs> no. The very so first you weren't open. as cool as you're saying you are. No, 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 no. Yeah, it took me. Yeah, that was. Uh, oh man, I got so many stories. I'm trying to think of what. 
so this is this <laughs> this is bad. This but my first ever open, I had a lower unit go out on my boat. Okay, so this is t typical like racing situation. Okay, something po happens mechanical, and I'm at the uh, service yard. I don't know what to do. Fletcher, you go to the service yard. You talk to Mercury. They'll right. work it out. So next morning, I'm there at the service yard, and there's another guy there ahead of me, and um, it was actually Happy at the time, or not not Happy. I'm sorry, Scotty. And anyhow, this guy's an angler. He's calling Mercury, like calling him, and I'm like, guy, like it's seven o'clock in the morning. Like pump the brakes. You know they're going to be here, but this dude's like insisting on call. Like yeah. he needs his boat fixed. Finally, Scotty gets there. Scotty's not very happy, uh -oh. and Scotty <laughs> kind of took it out on both of us. That <laughs> oh no, <laughs> like, like whoa, bro, like why? Why, why are you guys bugging me? Yeah. Basically, got him in trouble, which it didn't have anything to do with him, right? And that was kind of like my introductory into fishing. Like Scotty kind of laid into us both, and I was just like. Why am I here? Right now? <laughs> <laughs> like I feel like I'm in racing all over again. Why am I here? Um, but it was it, it all worked out, and me and Scotty still laugh about it to this day. He actually just retired last year, but uh, that was my first Bassmaster right. Open, and I was like, "Yeah, this is what, what am I doing? Here? I just paid fifteen hundred dollars to enter this thing. Why am I here?" <laughs> well, so here's one one question I have for you. So. I became a Hunter Shrock fan a while ago. So you bring up the, you know, the the punk rock music, yeah. the metal. Yep. That was one of my fan. I was I became a Hunter Shrock fan. The when, Kid Rock one. When one of the <laughs> <laughs> one of your YouTube videos was just straight slamming metal, and I'm like, a guy that's not about country music. I'm me. not alone. Like, that was yeah. me. I was like, oh my god, this guy gets me. Like it's, <laughs> yes. not, it's like it's not it's not this generic country music. Yeah. Again, yeah. a fit, a middle aged fat white guy on the front of a boat. Like it was like it was somebody who's not normal like that yeah. went fishing in <laughs> adrenaline junkie yeah like i was like that's dope you yeah. know what i mean like so i like i mean like you talking yeah. about the freestyle stuff yeah. like we grew up watching yeah. you know all those old like mini warrior videos yes. which is an old motocross video and they all had this punk rock songs to it and i basically made my fishing videos a template off of the old race and yeah. stuff. Works, that's all yeah. I. That's all I watched. Yeah. Like that's what I was so used it to. Over. Yeah. So it was like you know the the hook sets. That's the action. Yeah. Da da da. Like, yeah. um, and it you know at the at the time it was you didn't see a lot of that. Yeah. So it, yeah. it like caught a lot of people's attention. Yeah. That's yeah. dope. That's so dope. I mean, <laughs> I mean awesome. and it is. It's cool, man. I mean, like, I don't know. That's me. That's what I like. I want fishing to be cool. Yeah. It's like I think so many people make fishing kind of uncool. And it's like I want kids to look at it and kids coming up to look at it and be like, like, oh, that's actually like cool to get out there on the water and to go fishing. Because, I mean, that's the only way we're going to keep it going. Well, if you look you know? at where everything is, kind of, like we talk about those videos, I mean, how many years ago was that? Yeah. That was 2014 maybe. Yeah. Wow. So an hour and 22, which isn't that long ago, but it is yeah. being in the social media world that we're in. Right. Um, I think as far as making fishing cool, I think we've all – done a really good yes, job absolutely. because look at the high school fishing the college fishing yes. the the even the younger angler fishing middle stuff. Yep. middle There's school, middle school yep. team yep. near me i mean dude like these kids are so young yep. but they're wanting to do it yeah they're wanting to be out there and they're wanting to take so many different avenues to be in it yeah you know what i mean like it's crazy i used to be a teacher and i would have fifth grade kids tell me like i want to be a youtuber yeah or i want to be you know this or you know i want to be a professional fisherman like like kids didn't used to say things like that unless you were like really into it like I was or like Bailey was like mm -hmm. you know when I grew up like the only thing I ever knew was fishing like yep. you know mm -hmm. we rode motorcycles and but it was wasn't the cool thing to do it wasn't the cool no. like I got made fun of for going fishing <laughs> they're like you're going fishing baby yep. and, and now it's like <laughs> I made fun of for fishing in Tennessee oh uh, bro listen it's not like you're from New York <laughs> I know right but but it's like it wasn't the cool thing to do when I was a kid and it's yep. like now it's like everybody 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 wants yep. to do it and I think it's because they're starting to realize that like you know, this isn't just like a thing that you do. And this is going to sound very cliche, but it's just the truth. This is like a, literally a way of life. It's mm -hmm. a culture. Yep. And like everybody's looking for a tribe and everybody's looking for a group to belong to. And I believe that this culture and this tribe is one of the coolest ones to belong to because we get to do this. Right. Like, you know, how many other people could sit around a fire and a dude who makes YouTube videos and a dude who, you know, <laughs> professionally tournament fishes and a guy who helps run, like, the coolest battery company in the world can all sit here and we can have a conversation. Like, yeah. it's, it's yeah. freaking weird. There's no <laughs> other industry like this 
<laughs> and it's badass because we're doing it. You know what That's I mean? Right. It's, it's so dope. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Well, we'll, we'll sign it off. Our, our first victim of the night. You've made <laughs> He's going to let me go. You've made it through. No, not that OnlyFans account. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so one last question for you to, to where we're going to transfer and, and get in a, another pro in here. Yep. But uh, one person you'd like to fish with in your boat before uh, your career's over. Hmm. Man, why you got to put me on the spot like that? I think you asked me that before, didn't you? I don't know. It can't be Sean Budiak, because no, we know that's a clear answer. I'd like to fish with uh, Rick Clun. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, yeah, that'd be pretty sick. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of people I'd like to fish with, but just I look up to Rick a lot, so that'd that's be awesome. pretty cool. Heck yeah. Well, Hunter, we're looking, we're glad you're here, dude. Looking forward to getting on the water. I'm looking and, forward uh, to tomorrow. Yeah. Y'all don't tomorrow know what's coming fun. yet, but stay tuned. <laughs> uh, me and Alex are looking forward to uh, talking with you tomorrow. Oh, yeah, it's, um, I'm, I, they let the reins off of me, so there's no telling what's going to come out of my right. mouth. It's gonna be I, I do not have an OnlyFans account. Yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm subscribed. It's we'll drop it in the description. But, you know. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed that episode with Hunter. That was a lot of fun. Doing it in person is like a whole different realm where it's like, I could do my introduction and everything, talking with you guys here when it's just me at home. But it's actually kind of interesting trying to do it you know, in person and trying to remember everything, especially being, you know, in front of an audience, but also like knowing that it's a different atmosphere. Like it was a kind of, it was super cool. It's one that uh, I basically texted Deacon and Andy in our group chat right away. And I was like, boys, we got to get this tech because how cool would it be for you guys and for us to do on the road podcasts with people that we're hanging out with. Like if, if I go down to whichever, uh, you know, Louisiana, which you guys are listening to this show. I'm actually in Louisiana right now for the Hobie tournament of champions. It'd be cool to like go have an in-person podcast with the guys that I'm staying with at the house. That'd be pretty cool. So it's a different aspect. We're going to try to bring to you guys. It's one we're taking notes from. Thank you. The boys over at silo creative Jacob, uh, Jacob fine over there is a mastermind behind a lot of this stuff uh, and joined us on this shoot. He's really, really good at what he does. Um, and Andrew Clatt was actually a photographer that was there. They got some pretty cool shots. So, um, I will drop their info down below as well. If you guys need a photographer, an outdoor photographer, outdoor creative, those, these are the guys to go to. They're freaking bad ass. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that cool little bonus episode coming up for episode two of our little bonus series is, uh, we are joined again by our buddy, Mr. Justin Hamner. Justin Hamner is another X2 power pro and, uh, he will be episode two. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, let us uh, let us know some feedback if you guys like this kind of style. If this is something that we need to start bringing into the ranks, you know, as we travel to, you know, put on the episode listings of doing some stuff more in person with these guys. Let us know. We'd love to do that. It's a lot of fun. It makes things a lot more like it's it's completely different than being across a, a TV screen. So hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, if you haven't already, please give us a rating review on MP3, like and subscribe on YouTube, and we'll see you guys on the next show. Oh, my God.